Hi and welcome to this week's video. We're going to have a go at getting the side stringer bit sorted out a little bit further. So join me, I'll show you what I did. Okay then, so I'm just dealing with, with stringers. So uh, the way I, I deal with it is I sand sort of 45 degrees top and bottom. So I've got a slight sort of try. It's more like a sort of 50p piece. It's got flat, flat there, vertical, other flat sort of 45 and the flat on the other side. Okay. I go along do, <coughs> doing that along the whole length and then uh, I've made up a block. Uh, all I did was I drilled down the, the, the block and then cut so it's a semicircle. This allows me to put, uh, in this case I'm using 180 uh, emery. I can slot that around, hold that in place and just move that up and down like that. And because I've uh, taken off those, those sort of corners, that's very quickly rounded that to uh, a nice half round and that will be consistent all the way along so that's uh, how I'm doing this uh, I'll be putting a, a, a coat of varnish on those again because the stringers were originally coated but the whole string will get a second coat that way there will be a single coat on the edge here double coats on the side and that will protect everything uh, for going on and just before I cover it will have a very very light sand let's make sure it's dead smooth and the covering isn't bonded to the stringers so it'll be able to ride across there without wearing out. No tapes uh, and no bonding for the uh, Ortex 600 on, my, on, uh, on this aircraft. Okay, I'll crack on and do the rest. <coughs> well, I've got this uh, piece of uh, aluminium alloy which I've uh, it's uh, one point uh, four millimeters thick and I've uh, rolled it so it's actually got a curve on it uh, roughly matches the, the, the sort of radius which we've got going on here I've got a bit ex excited and rolled far too much so I'm just going to cut this now into uh, 35 millimeter lengths which is the uh, the length of the the, the uh, various uh, upper car mounting areas and uh, create the uh, bits to go into the there for securing the cowl at the top. So we'll see how we get on. Well, there are the uh, the plates uh, drilled for the screw which is going to hold them in or help hold them in position on the bulkhead. Uh, the other whole area has been uh, left blank because that will be uh, drilled uh, with the cowl in position. Uh, and grippers or Clico type fast uh, held in position and then will be enlarged and uh, I'll probably put anchor nuts on those or I might use rib nuts I don't know yet okay well, what I've done is I've just drilled uh, through the outer skin section to clear the head of the screw and then I've put in these uh, slightly domed head screws uh, through uh, this and into the uh, into the woodwork underneath this will all be wet assembled with uh, epoxy and then the top over here will be covered up with uh, the epoxy and uh, wood flour mixture to smooth it off because these should never ever need to come out again uh, it'll just help to secure everything so it's tied with glue holding the aluminium section in place and uh, the screws going in with uh, epoxy on the thread uh, and then over the top it's got the epoxy so which actually is going to locate the head as well so there's no way that that's going to be uh, coming loose uh, it's going to be a right pain if ever need to be replaced but uh, that's the way it's going to be and we have the long side stringers uh, notched out to that with a router and a guard I just need to taper the uh, front and rear ends now uh, one or two bits did pick out but nothing major so uh, 
I'll just glue in another piece and sand those to, to the actual shape and finish it off. Uh, overall, not bad. Uh, I've just used a saw and a plane to uh, tape the very ends of these uh, these stringers here for the tail end and a short section for the front and chop saw to create a load of support blocks which will bond onto the side of the stringer alternatively top and bottom and onto the side skin there we go and my next task is as I've done here I've marked up where they're going and I'm going to glue all the bottom ones all the ones which are going to support the bottom of the stringer into place uh, well not all of them but most the majority of them into place and then I can start uh, gluing the stringer into position working from the tail end back there getting that glued on and I'll work my way up using one hour epoxy right I've just been setting things up but I've got the uh, 10 top blocks in position going towards the front there and what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue from here to this one here uh, for the moment let that set off I'll put the bottom block in at the same time and then uh, once that's all cured I'll then work my way forward however far I go you see I've got a square uh, clamped on that's to stop it from uh, wanting to fall over and put strain on everything while the glue is setting it took a day but there we go we've got the uh, the stringer basically in glue setting uh, I had to go away from the one hour in the end because it was just going off a little bit too quickly because currently it's 29 degrees centigrade in my workshop so uh, I'm going to let this, this lot uh, cure off there's some squeeze out I've got to sand back well, I don't have to but I'm going to because you know me I don't like having it about and uh, then I can round uh, that off at the moment it's so precarious with this clamp here I can't carry on rounding off the, uh, the stringers at the rear end which I was doing with the uh, one hour epoxy it was taking 10 minutes to go off but there we go hey ho uh, we will uh, hopefully crack on again and do a little bit more uh, tomorrow but I'm calling it quits uh, to let this lot really cure well I've uh, cleaned up the uh, excess sort of squeeze out resin on uh, on the side long John and I've rounded it uh, up to about here I've left it sort of flat yeah uh, here I've just rounded it too uh, we need a sort of final bit of rounding over but I've got to put in uh, a gusset uh, plate well for want of a better word a piece of uh, ply for the covering to, to attach to ours here so it needs to be uh, just over an inch wide uh, it's going to be scallops in but also to help uh, keep these uh, bolt heads uh, slightly re reduce the height that they're coming up over the top but it's going going down there because I want the covering to stick to the, to the side I don't want it to be stuck down on this uh, side here it would look peculiar so I'm going to put a, a piece of ply in I'll make it look like a gusset there fair it out here and then with a sort of scallop in the middle rather than having the covering just wrapped around the edge where the cow would, could chafe on it end up cutting through the uh, through the uh, actual uh, material and uh, only having a very small amount of attachment then uh, in the airflow so by having that little thin piece of 30 second ply bonded into place that, that gives security for the covering so for, for about the last foot and a bit I haven't fully rounded it yet but I have all the way back including down here where although it'll, it'll have a, a, a bit sanded into it there'll be a cover panel going over here plywood panel uh, there for the uh, to support um, the covering for where the elevator tube comes in and out of here that's the plan there 
Um, well, that was a scallops uh, front edge, uh, but it'll be joined at the back here and along the top and on here. Again, piece of 30 second, but I've got to work out exactly where it needs its cut out uh, for the uh, elevator rear push pull uh, tube to, uh, to, to activate on. Uh, this has been uh, sorted, and while I was doing the gluing of uh, each of the stages going along here, I was rounding uh, the upper turtle deck uh, stringer. So from the centre to the top here, was the side I should say, from here to the star edge of the starboard side, these have all been rounded. So when I turn the whole thing over to put the other side stringer on, I will do the same to the bottom or the port side. I will be making up a little plate section to go in here to help uh, cover these screws because if you do that you can sort of see that those screws will be underneath the covering. So I'm just going to put a, a, a light ply, thin ply uh, plate over the top uh, supported with a couple of pieces of uh, triangular wood maybe a piece of bolster blocking underneath uh, the washers and the washers being bonded in uh, just just sort of that sort of area and that way uh, I'll have a hole in the, that to allow a socket to go onto the heads of the bolts but because it's thin ply uh, and there's nothing around it um, I'll be able to put grommets into the holes to, to blank off the holes there well, here's a piece of uh, 30 second ply, uh, two inches wide. I've just radius the corners either side and glued on a piece of uh, strip there and there. Uh, this is eighth inch thick. I've tapered this one and the ply, as you can sort of see the, the lines on the ply there, just it's finishing off to make it perfect parallel. This has been uh, tapered down, uh, it's got a slight slant on it and I will varnish the inside. Now this uh, before I bond it and the area on the uh, side of the aircraft and it will, uh, the idea is I'll show you. Uh, the idea is it sits up here, uh, equally spaced on the fuselage side and it matches the uh, the angle for the covering to go to the stringer and what that does is it gives me a good bond area for the covering to go on to rather than just relying on this quite thin lip here with the hinge and various bits and pieces and starting to wrap around into the cockpit I didn't want it to intrude into the cockpit too much the covering so by having this on here it gives something for the covering to bond onto being pulled sideways hence the need for this edge here to give enough glue area to be able to cope with the, uh, the tension of the covering so there's that piece uh, I will so I've already varnished here I will clean off the varnish in the contact area where that, uh, where that strip goes and this little strip here and I'll varnish the inside of this so it's protected, get that bond into place so I can uh, varnish the rest of it. I've made it two inches wide, it doesn't need to be two inches wide for the Auratex UL600 uh, but it'll also match with the colour line going down the side of the aircraft so uh, that's where the, the, the change in uh, colour will be so the step won't be so, so visible if there's any slight step because of the edge of this won't be quite so visible uh, when people look at the aircraft. There's the uh, section glued in place. Uh, I've just given that a quick coat of varnish. So my next bit is I'm just going to ruffle up some rivet, uh, some washers to go uh, on here, bond those on, and then create the uh, cover plate to go over the top of those. There's the uh, the plate in position, bonded in. I said similar sort of principle to the one back there except it just extends out a little bit further uh, 19 mil or three quarter inch holes uh, for the grommets 
and that allows the socket to drop in nicely onto the bolt heads which are going to sit in inside there so there we go that's uh, all been varnished up uh, gonna have a second coat yet well folks that's it for uh, this week's video quite a chunk of bits on the side I'm hoping that in the next video we get to do the other side uh, stringer well the front section here the other side stringer and hopefully get back to doing a little bit of work on the uh, undercarriage main legs but we'll see what happens so see you next time keep well thank you for watching if you enjoyed the video please hit the thumbs up you can subscribe or even hit the little bell notification for future videos any comments would be appreciated and i'll try to get back to you as soon as i can remember go fly and feel the sky